Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Welcome to Cebu City during Sinalog, the, uh, the mother of all festivals, huge festival here in the Philippines. Cebu City, Cebu. And uh, I'm going to take you down Osmina Boulevard, one of the main, main boulevards going from the uptown area to the downtown area. Show you some of the sites, uh, explain to you some of the goings on. Anyway, huge speakers they've got spread out very close, just booming, uh, literally body shaking volumes. Um, anyway, Main Street, this is under construction, as you can see. The sidewalk's under construction, and uh, they've got some painted bricks in here. And when I was walking the other day, I noticed that it, it, it had rained a little bit, and that the paint they're using is very slippery so unless you're unless you've got the proper shoes for walking on slippery wet surfaces uh, try to stay off of the painted surfaces the my opinion they should have found a uh, more suitable uh, paint for that purpose anyway you've got people lining up this is a, a huge procession over a million people uh, probably proceeding from uh, from the downtown area and up into uh, the uptown area and around a few different streets and back down towards the main church in the downtown area. We're headed to the downtown area. I'm going to let you listen in on a little bit of what the procession sounds like with prayers going on. Santa Maria, Probably thousands of uh, of uniform personnel from the the army, the navy, the air force, the coast guard, um, criminology students, and uh, many other organizations who are helping to provide security up along this route. You can see them locking elbows there to keep the people from uh, getting out into the procession, the walking area. And uh, it gets a little tricky even if you want to cross the street. And when I got down in here, we're getting close to, uh, close to Cologne Street down here. And I just want to come down here and take some video. I've, years past, I've taken video in the middle of the procession. It's quite a moving experience, depending upon your state of mind. And didn't really want to do that again, but... Uh, but wanted to get down further and take some video down around uh, what's called Carbone uh, Public Market, huge area, uh, some different Cinelog type events and other events taking place down around there. Really been a shakeup the last couple of years with uh, the main event on Sunday, the third Sunday of January. Uh, the main events taking place several kilometers, a couple miles south at South Road Properties. All that used to take place up up in this area, downtown uh, to the uptown area at uh, Cebu City Sports Complex. And uh, it means people have to find transportation out there or like we did last year, we walked uh, a couple of miles out there and a couple of miles back. Um, there, there was some free transportation for a few hours in the morning, I, I guess, taking people out there. But still took my uh, binoculars out, and there's still thousands of people walking on the highway all throughout the day going out to South Road Properties, which is on the south side of Cebu City. The mayor of Cebu City insisted for the second year to have the main event on uh, Sunday, third Sunday, uh, to take place out there. Grand parade and such, and uh, against the wishes of the governor of Cebu and many other mayors who want it to stay in the, uh, the area that it always has been. 
there is more room out there, I guess, but there's complaints about, uh, last year there was complaints about uh, the, the muddy area, and they did cover quite a bit of that finally, just in time. Um, there are issues with transportation, getting people out there and back, because there's not, uh, my understanding, there's not a lot of places for all the groups to stay out there, whereas there are a lot of schools they can stay in here in the main uh, Cebu City metropolitan area. Some of the vendors were a little unhappy. They, uh, I read one story, a vendor that was down in the uh, downtown area, wasn't getting many customers. And so she went out to uh, South Road Properties, SRP. And uh, she was very upset because she had spent a lot of money for the items that she wanted to sell. and. She wasn't getting very uh, many customers out there as well. And my observation, just walking around for several days, is that there seems to be seems to be lacking uh, quite a number of, of of visitors, Filipinos and other foreigners. There are a lot of foreigners, but not like there were pre-government lockdowns. And. Uh, I think the economic situation for a lot of people, they just don't have the money to travel and spend going to fiestas. So that is that is one issue. And the other issue is just trying to get out to South Road properties. What, I think, four kilometers, five kilometers, something like that out there, a couple of miles, and uh, get out there and then get back again if you're staying in the city number of events going on in the city. The, the various malls have different events. There are events at downtown at uh, Plaza Independencia. There are events at uh, the Fuentios Mina uh, Travel Circle Park every night. So there's a lot of competition. And when you, when you separate it, separate the uh, various events by several kilometers, uh, that creates their own issues. Uh, logistics issues in, in moving people. And I think that is, uh, seems to be, be an issue with uh, many of the vendors, many of the peeper, people who would, would have attended the events. Otherwise, this is kind of a main circle, right? Cologne Street running east and west here. And a uh, number of malls downtown area. A lot of people down here headed to the the big uh, older church down here for services into the various malls. Now we had planned to walk out to SRP, South Road Properties, uh, early evening to check out, check out that area out there. But uh, in the end, we, we, we went out there last year and we decided that we would just stay here, go up, see if anything's going on in Mango Avenue which there's usually uh, like street parties going on. Uh, the mayor said no street parties this year, so we'll just see what, what happens there. Um, I got a comment in a previous video that uh, today that uh, one of my subscribers was at Ayala Mall already in early, early uh, or middle afternoon. He said there's already a crowd of people waiting for uh, the entertainment and fireworks display that's going to go off there later this evening, 9 o'clock, I think. And if there's not much going on at Mango Avenue, Mango Square area, we might wander over to Ayala to see what's going on. There's going to be a, there's a lot of competition, and there's fewer, fewer tourists and, and fewer uh, Filipinos from the provinces, it, it seems. During this synalog, from what I've witnessed, uh, four or five different synalogs now. From uh, I think 2019, I think there was, um, I think it was reported, if I remember correctly, around three million, and I read today in an article 1.4 million. So less than half the people uh, in, involved in the various festivities, according to that article, if I read it correctly. Anyway, trying to find my way around the the big march, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and the big crowds on the main street, I found this narrow street. 
And I was really quite surprised there weren't a lot more people using this to get around. Interesting experience all by itself. People that you can meet in narrow, narrow alleys. As I sit in my condominium editing this video on uh, Sunday about, uh, about 7 p.m., and I'm going to go out here another 30, 40 minutes, going to go out and see what's going on out on the various streets. But there is noise, a noise all over from, all, I'm surrounded by noise, and uh, there's no separation between the noise. And uh, right basically below me, there's a company trying to attract future students to their college. They, they're making a lot of noise. People cross the street are having their own party, and they've got their music going on. People about a block away at the Barangay Hall, they've got their own music going, uh, some of it synalog related, a lot of it not synalog related. Uh, this afternoon I had all that noise going on, plus at least two different karaoke characters uh, got the volume turned up on high and that blending in with everything else. Have you ever had a radio and you've got two or three or four different radio stations all bleeding over one another? That's what this sounds like. It's just, uh, I was explaining to, to a friend that, you know, you're, you're blasting your, your noise out. And the people across the street got their own little party going. And you're, it, it's kind of disrespectful, in my opinion. Hello. You're just overriding and forcing them to listen to whatever you're playing. Festival time, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of noise, but gee whiz, isn't there a limit to how much volume you need to use? Hello. My office uh, where I do my editing is in my bedroom and uh, got my windows open. It's probably about 80, 82 degrees or so. Reasonable breeze coming through, so it's comfortable. And I've got noise blaring in from three different windows, three different directions. A lot of oranges, a lot of vendors selling oranges, especially oranges, uh, all over the city. With the uh, construction on Osmania Boulevard, what's going on? They're putting in a uh, BRT, bus rapid transit system. They're tearing up a couple of lanes in the center of the uh, boulevard and uh, those are going to be bus lanes only basically and uh, with that construction they're putting tra more traffic lights in and the sidewalks have been kind of damaged and still under construction now this is the downtown area the Magellan's Cross just ahead here in that park type area ahead of me and a big church, a couple of different churches downtown where they, a lot of people go for one or more services on a daily basis. But anyway, about Osmania Boulevard being under construction, uh, dozens and dozens of vendors selling t-shirts, various things for Synalog, used to be on the, the wider sidewalks there on, on Osmania Boulevard. But because of the construction, they have moved them down uh, kind of on the very end of the downtown area, down near Carbone Public Market and Pier 1 area, right here, the trade fair. And they've got, I think, like 50 spots in here. And people selling t-shirts and souvenirs, and uh, they were complaining that because they've been moved and so far out of the main pedestrian traffic that they aren't selling nearly as many goods as they had in previous years. So that is part of the issue. When, when you have a, an event that has a certain protocol with vendors and events in certain places and you change that, there is certain risk involved that the people are familiar with uh, certain protocols, where the events are, and you start moving everything around, there's no big signs directing people. Plus, everything they're selling here, almost, 
you can buy further uptown. You don't have to walk way down here uh, to find those items. So unless a person is really motivated to come down here and look around, um, I think a lot of these vendors are going to be quite disappointed in the end. All there is down here basically is a whole lot of parking area. So if the people park and then wander through this area on their way to the downtown area or uptown area, uh, that will give them a little bit of uh, a little bit of customers there. Anyway, very very old building here. I, I think it's going to be turned into something eventually. Not sure what, but interesting architecture. And just straight ahead, keep going down this straight uh, straight across the main highway. You got Independ Plaza Independencia, Pier One. Fort San Pedro, worth a visit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.